What's up, guys? The Urban Outlaw, Bobby, back at it for another one. This time we are live again. Appreciate y'all for showing up on today's stream. I uh, let me move my mic over here so y'all can hear me a little better. There we go. That'll work. But thanks again, y'all, for tuning in. <laughs> I told you it was gonna be like a little bit. <laughs> Two hours later. Yes, I am back. We're live again. Um, hold on. Before we get started, I have to put this out on the old Twitter sphere in case the YouTube noties do not go out. So let's do that real quick. But thanks again for tuning in, y'all. Appreciate y'all. Hopefully everybody's enjoying their... Uh, or enjoyed it their weekend, I should say. What up, Brayton? What's going on? So let me uh, pull this up, and we will uh, put this out into the Twitter sphere first to let people know that we're live. So let me do that real quick. But I hope everybody enjoyed their weekend. I did a little fish and I didn't get much. This is the end of the season for uh, or winding down the striped bass season in uh, the Northeast here. They should start their annual migration pretty soon. Uh, the fishing has slowed down uh, almost to a halt. So let's sh put this out on the Twitter sphere to promote the new channel. So today's topic is going to be how weather affects the fishing and just the different factors. Pretty much we're, we're going to focus on weather mainly, but um, mostly like tides and, and the moon and, and all these different factors that, that affect um, how the fish behave because it does. It's there's outside factors that determine a lot. Um, when you're fishing for, for the striped bass around here. Um, so let's, let's mainly tell, let's start up. Let's start off with the weather first. It's a uh, striped bass are, are a very picky, picky fish. They, they require um, what they require a lot of uh, certain, um, or I should say stable weather conditions to be, you know, to feed and to act, you know, normally normal, the way they act, normally, you know, the way they act it's, they're a very specific and, you know, finicky kind of fish. Um, so let's focus on the weather first. So striped bass don't like really hot or really cold weather. So like the winter time, there are very, there are fish that winter, that overwinter here. Um, but uh, um, it's, it's maybe if i had to put a number on it maybe 10% 15% of the population um the vast majority of them migrate uh they migrate south to um warmer waters they they don't like very cold water and they don't like very warm very warm water either so the summertime this year we hit a we hit a month of uh we hit about a 3 week stint where it was in between 85 and 90 pretty much for the entirety of the month. And it warmed that ocean water up to a point where a lot of these, a lot of these bigger striped bass will basically glue themselves to the bottom. And the only way to realistically go after them and get them is to either have a lure, um, you know, a big lipped head, you know, a big lipped lure that's going to dive, you know, when you drag it behind your boat or when you pull it from shore, it's going to dive to that, you know, 10 to 20 foot, you know, mark. So a deep diving lure, or, uh, you could use like a bucktail jig with a, with a tail on it, something that sinks down into the water column that gets down far enough, uh, that it'll, it'll make its way about two and a half, two and a half, three feet off the bottom, which ideally for those, for those big, you know, trophy size striped bass is where you want to be. Um, in, in, uh, warm, 
when the water is uh, incredibly warm. They don't usually move. They're not going to realistically move too much if the if the water if the weather and the water is is really hot and really warm. It, it's they will stay down in that cooler water and wait till uh, the sun goes down to to uh, make their way up into the water column. So on really cold and really warm weather, you're going to have to go after uh, you're going to have to go after them. Uh, you're going to have to go to them, in other words. So you need a, a deep diving lure, like a heavy, like a sink, a heavy, uh, a heavy bucktail jig or a, a big, uh, like a deep diving uh, lipped um, swim bait or the paddle tails that you can use are, are going to have to be heavy. They're going to have to be uh, heavy. And the downfall to that is to get a heavy paddle tail, you usually have to get you know, usually have to bump it up in size. And sometimes to get down, uh, to get down to those deeper, you know, to those depths, those deeper parts, you know, where the fish are sitting by the time you get, you know, by the time you get a paddle tail big enough to do that, it's a foot long and it's almost too big for the fish to even look at as a prey item. And they'll just let it swim by them rather than trying to chase it down. So it's, it's definitely, you definitely have to pay attention to that. And it's, it's, it's a, uh, it's a science. You have to really, um, you have to really kind of think like a fish and they're not going to predate, you know, a predatory fish, like a striped bass. They're very lazy. They're, they're going to let their food, uh, swim by. They're not going to go to their food. They're going to wait until it swims by them and dart out and grab it. They're not going to be actively hunting in really warm or really cold weather. You're going to have to take that lure and, and get it to them. Um, another factor would be when a high pressure or low pressure systems move, move through like big, big thunderstorm, uh, like a big rainstorm or thunderstorm or hurricanes or any, any type of high pressure or low pressure system. Uh, one thing about striped bass, they are also very, uh, they're very sensitive to barometric pressure. They don't like a lot. They don't like high pressure. So when um um when you know these these high pressure or low pressure systems uh uh move through, they're they definitely determine where these fish are going to sit in the water column. When these when these high pre when a high pressure system moves through um moves through an area where striped bass are they it will pull them off the bottom the, if the pressure gets too high it will pull them off the bottom and uh up into the water column so you may be able if um if you're if you're gonna fish in a high pressure in a high pressure system uh one you got to be ready to you got to be ready for the weather change that's that's a definite you have to dress accordingly um and uh the second part to that is uh you can you can use that to your advantage. It'll pull those fish off the bottom and into the into the upper levels of that water column. So some of these some of these bigger uh, striped bass can be caught um, either before a high pressure system moves through or after a high pressure system is leaves because they're still going to be up in the water column and it's going to take less effort to get to them. Um, so if you're willing to kind of get, you know, if you're willing to, to, to brave the elements, you can, so that's some of the better fishing, but you have, like I said, you have to be able to brave the elements and know what you're, you know, know what you're getting into. What's up Valhalla? What's going on? Once again, COC in the house. Hey, Brayton, what's up Brayton? So, um, like I said, uh, it's high pressure systems are tough to fish in, but if you're willing to kind of brave the elements, it's, it's actually, um, it's like there, that's actually can be very good fishing. You're probably going to get drenched in and beat up in the weather, but, uh, it's, uh, the high pressure and low pressure systems are, are, can be your friend, but once again, you just got to be able to, to know what you're getting into and uh, dress accordingly. 
Now, the next one would be uh, the tides. Let's talk about the tides. You can catch fish on low and high tide, especially from uh, from the surf. If you're going to surf fish, you can definitely catch it on both low and high tides. Um, it's a different animal on and off the uh, on and off a boat, though. Uh, with the tides, you 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 want to. Uh, it's a lot easier for you to fish the rip line. Hey, goose, what's up? So the rip line is where the white water, uh, white water from the breaking waves on a beach or a shoreline start. So you want to, it's a lot easier to get to that rip line. It's usually about two to three, two to 500 yards offshore. The, the, they call it the rip line. It's where the, where the, the, it's where the, the ocean, the, the, um, topography of the ocean starts to incline towards the beach it causes those waves to basically form and curl that's the rip line it's where the white water starts that's the best place to fish for for striped bass it's it's it can be difficult to get to, you know most of the time you're not going to be able to get to a rip line uh from the shoreline so you have to do the best you can um in those types of situations uh so um the tides are going to be your, uh, you have to know how to, how to use the tides to your advantage. Um, when you fish from shore bridges and, and, uh, piers can be your friend, uh, dur uh, for, if you're fishing from the shoreline in, in the tides, the tide itself is going to either push bait fish in or flush them out low to, uh, on the outgoing, on the outgoing tides, you're going to want to set yourself up you're going to want to set yourself up uh possibly uh, preferably on jetties or bridges and where the uh tide where the tide flushes out of a harbor or a breakwater and you're basically going to try and catch those striped bass and bait fish as they get pushed out of the out of your harbor in the t with the tide um high tide if uh high tide is probably the best tide to is probably the best time high tide and slack tide so for fishing amateurs uh slack tide is you get about 45 minutes to an hour in between a tide change before it moves so the best times you want to fish are an hour before the tide change and up until an hour after that's your window so it's about a three hour window to where you're going to get your best chance to catch that, that trophy size striped bass. Um, on the, so if we were going to say a, if we were looking for a perfect kind of a perfect tide scenario, you would want it to be uh, a high tide on either a new moon or so no moon in the sky or a full moon the tide forces are going to be the greatest. So that's, that's going to be a, a tide that's in the middle of the night with a full moon or an, or no moon, because it's going to push the greatest amount of water towards the shoreline, therefore pushing the greatest amount of fish. And, uh, so little fish equal big fish. So it's going to push the greater amount of bait fish towards the shore, which is going to in, in turn, bring the bigger striped bass in there after them. So your ideal fishing situation would be a, a high tide on a new or uh, full moon. <laughs> That's nice. That's awesome. That's funny. So um, I've learned, at least from my um, for at least from my experience here fishing the, uh, uh, the areas around Cape Cod from the shore, uh, your best, there's, there's, a your best times are going to, my best times in my opinion are between, uh, 10 30, 11 o'clock PM to, 4 30 a.m in the morning that is your in my experience in all of my fishing experience uh those are the that went that time window is going to give you your best chance of landing a large either if you're fishing freshwater it's either going to be um 
a large, large mouth or small mouth bass, or um, if you're in the, in the ocean, like I do 99% of my fishing, it's going to be those trophy sized bluefish tuna and uh, striped bass. So that's, uh, that's the tides and the moons and the barometric uh, pressure temperature. We kind of briefly talked about it before, but it's like I said, striped bass are a very um, finicky fish. You, you, they require, um, they require a very specific uh, water temp. And if it, if, even if it fluctuates just slightly a degree or even a half a degree outside of their main kind of um, op, you know, water temp that they like to operate in, they they will either leave an area completely or just sink to the bottom and and uh, and not move until the the water adjusts the you know the ocean temp adjusts itself. Um, let's see, anything else I wanted to cover? Uh, I think on the next time, the next time we go live, I'm going to, uh, I went to Bass Pro guys and, uh, went to Bass Pro today and kind of restocked some of my stuff, um, restocked kind of my, my tackle supply, because that's another thing that we're, you know, you can, I can kind of just get in here briefly real quick before we get out of here is, um, if you're fishing from the shoreline, you're going to lose a lot of, you're going to lose a lot of gear. You are. You're definitely going to lose a lot of gear. So you're going to have to be willing to to kind of spend a lot of money. You're going to have to be willing to spend money. If you want to fish from the shore, you're going to you're going to have to kind of bite that, you know, bite the bullet on that one and and be able to uh, uh, just know that you're going to spend a lot of money on, on lost wars, because a lot of the times when you're fishing, uh, whether it's jetties, breakwater, you know, breakwaters, piers docks a lot of these these um fish are gonna grab a lure and the first thing they're gonna do is is grab that lure and and go right back where they came from and a lot of the times that's underneath this these structures or in between all these rocks that you're fishing and and you're gonna you're gonna get broke off your line is gonna get snapped off it's gonna get um it's gonna get broke off and you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to um uh, you're going to have to just accept the fact that you're going to spend a lot of money. Uh, you're definitely going to, going to spend a lot of, uh, a lot of money if you're fishing from the shore. And especially if you're using live bait, that's the other thing too. Um, if, if you're going to use, if you're lose, if you're using live bait, you're going to, it's expensive lot. And I mean like not frozen live bait. I mean, live bait, like still with a heartbeat, like you take it out of a bait box and, you know, out of an air, out of an aerated tank and throw it on a hook and drop it down there. That's, they're a lot of money. Live baits are, are a lot of money. It's $5. It's probably three to five bucks per live sand eel here. And it's probably $6 or more for live, uh, for, uh, other forms of live bait. It's, it's not cheap, but it, it definitely is one of the most effective ways to, to get, uh, fish. But I, uh, I think that's all I, uh, I think that's all I got for you guys today. I think, let me check. I have me, I have myself a little script here that I made. I wanted to make sure I hit all the, uh, hit all the points I wanted to before I get out of here. Anybody have any questions? comments or concerns yes the vast pro tank is it's big it's there's a lot yeah it's change it's definitely change it's definitely change but like I said, guys, those are just a couple of the factors that um, affect uh, striped bass when you fish for them. And 
uh, I just wanted to get give you guys some helpful uh, tips and tricks on how to use some of those uh, to your advantage. We're gonna be making uh, we're gonna be making a video about uh, the Bass Pro uh, haul that I got. We're gonna be. I, I don't know if I'm gonna actually. You know what? I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna be making it into a video or a. Uh, or a live stream. It'll it probably will end up being a video cuz they're just kind of easier for me to set up and do. But that's the next thing you'll probably you will guys will see from me is the uh haul that I got from Bass Pro today which was a pretty good one. I spent I think about about $100, about 100 110 bucks. And uh I'm just going to show you guys how to set some of this uh some of this stuff up. Maybe we'll go lore by lore and do it like that. Maybe little shorts per per uh per lore but that's what's coming up next for the urban outlaw i have a uh firearms a couple of firearms videos too that are that are going to be coming up i've uh i have yet to uh uh film those but i do have a couple in the works but thanks again for uh tuning in guys appreciate you all and i will catch you on the next one and as always tight lines and be safe guys and the urban outlaw is out of here see you next time